There's a package for you. Ehi, hey, dove c***o stai andando? Hi folks and welcome to AT Lab. I received this EcoFlow Delta 2 power station with 1 kilowatt hour Leaf Apple batteries for testing. A nice little travel object. I'll take you for a special ride. This EcoFlow has a charging system that can also be connected to the cigarette lighter of the car, but better doing something else. I also received the photovoltaic panels, which have a rated power of 220 watt, and which I immediately mounted on the roof of my car, so as to charge the batteries without consuming gasoline. <laughs> Thanks to the panel here above, I'm charging the EcoFlow batteries with 150 watt, even if today the sun is not the best. The beauty of these portable panels actually is that you can really mount them anywhere as they are flexible and foldable. The bag hooks up with snap hooks and allows you to support the panels and tilt them correctly towards the sun. On a sunny day and this panel, the 1 kWh batteries are fully charged in just 5 hours, thanks to a generated power of more than 200 watts. However, the EcoFlow charging system reaches a maximum of 500 watt input power, thanks to a converter and to an MPPT control all in just 12 kilos of portable power station and another 11 kilos of photovoltaic panels. Indeed, it is very convenient to carry around. But after a day of charging, it's time for some serious testing. Ale, I have some sausages. Do you have the grill to try it out? The grill? What do you mean? To generate these electric arcs, I used a microwave oven transformer and the current absorbed by the EcoFlow 1800 watt inverter jumps to the sky. But the goal was to cook some sausages. For those, the microwave oven transformer absorbs more than 12 amps. In any case, I would say optimal cooking. I actually placed the photovoltaic panels on my balcony in the sun. Having already placed them behind the railings and with the sun a little foggy, the produced power is about 100 watt. But being so comfortable, I moved the panels directly on the railings, tying them with the ropes and the snap hooks. I reconnected everything with the appropriate cables and this time the produced power easily exceeded 100 watt. Very convenient since they don't even take up space on the balcony. Finally, with a little more sun and tilting the panels in the right direction with respect to the sun, you get to exceed 170 watt. Keep in mind that the day was not super sunny. Don't ask me why, but I needed to inflate a tire of my car in the living room. Yes, I had a flat tire and the glue didn't dry in the cold of my garage. Thanks to the EcoFlow, I did it without problems by connecting an electric pump that normally works with the cigarette lighter socket of my car. Power consume about 30 watt. Nothing special for this battery that could run the pump for a whole day. So quickly, on the front panel there are also several USB sockets for charging various devices and two 100 watt USB Type-C sockets. 
These are really useful for directly charging even modern devices. While on the rear panel there is a 12V cigarette lighter socket, the 230V inverter sockets and the inputs for charging from photovoltaic panels or directly from the 230V mains. There's also the smartphone app that connects via Bluetooth. It asks you for some permissions and you can use it even without an internet connection. From the app you can check the status of charge and activate the various outputs. Back in the lab I do some technical tests on the bench. One thing I hadn't verified yet, the inverter output voltage which is exactly 230V AC as expected. Then I show you the concept of ground isolation of this battery system. I use the classic phase tester screwdriver that does not turn on if connected to the output of the EcoFlow. If I plug it into the wall instead, it turns on right away. This is because the battery is isolated from the protection earth and current cannot flow through the screwdriver and my body. Taking the oscilloscope, I also check the pure sine wave that generates the inverter. And also in this case, it is perfect, without any audible frequency harmonics. The outdoor tests were certainly good, but I want to see more clearly the waveforms that the inverter generates when it is under heavy load conditions. In fact, the microwave oven transformer absorbs huge currents. So as you can see here, I set everything on my bench. I have the microwave oven transformer here. Here is the switch and the oscilloscope. And I measure the current via a current probe. So let's turn on the output of the inverter. As you can see here, I have the sinusoidal wave at the output. And uh, I would like just to start with a uh, unloaded measurement just to see the current drawn from the transformer without any load and hopefully without any arc and let's see. Okay, without making electric arcs the no load current absorbed by the microwave oven transformer is below approximately 5 amp. But it is very out of phase and distorted. In fact the current peak is shifted at 90 degrees with respect to the voltage peak. This is due to the microwave oven transformer construction with the iron core nearly saturated. Damn it, under load, however, all hell breaks loose. When the electric arc strikes, the current exceeds 25 amp and the inverter's overcurrent protection trips, generating a series of high frequency pulses. If you are interested in these electric arcs generated by the microwave oven transformer, I leave you a video here above in the tab. Anyway, EcoFlow greatly surpassed even these last tests, but I'd wanted to leave you with a little spoiler for the future videos. If you liked this video, don't forget to share it with friends. Only thanks to your support, I can continue in this amazing activity here on YouTube. And of course, feel free to join the ATLAB channel and tilt the notification bell. See you soon, guys!